another chilly morning here on the Sunshine Coast. It's not really the Sunshine Coast, is it? That's why I moved here. Get away from the bad weather. Anyway, this episode should be an absolute cracker um, because we are probably going to go for our first drive on the 80 today. And hopefully, if we've got enough time, if I get my stuff sorted and this thing together, Dino Tune. But before we get into that, I'm gonna do a bit of a giveaway because I haven't done a giveaway for a while. And no, I'm not giving away a t-shirt or a hoodie or some parts. I'm giving away an experience. A money cannot buy experience. Now, later this year, I'm going around a full lap of Australia. We've got Melbourne, Victoria, South Australia, New South Wales, Perth, all the way across for all the four drive shows. So I'll probably be near you in one of your states very soon. And I'm gonna be giving away a drive in the Built Not Bought 80. That is right, the winner of this competition will get to come for a ride in the Built Not Bought 80 Van Cruiser when I come near your state. So then this competition, all you gotta do is jump into our website and grab anything. And every dollar spent is an entry. So if you spend 50 bucks, you get 50 entries. If you spend 100 bucks, you get 100 entries. So at the end of a, a week, we're gonna give it one week and I'll draw the winner in the next episode. Um, and every now I'll be thrown in the multiple amount of times depending on how many entries they've got. Um, and then the winner, We'll be able to come for a ride in the Build Not Bought 80. That simple. So there'll be a link down below, guys, to the website. You want to jump over and enter that competition. Anyway, we've got a ton of work to do this episode if we're going to make it to the dyno in time. Let's get into it. Oh, my God. That was crazy. Oh blimey, I don't really know where to begin with this one. We've just got to get it finished, pretty much. More has come out than has gone in, so the radiator is still away getting the shroud made. So cooling system will be done soon. Um, what else isn't here? We've got that missing, that, 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 all of this, that, or oh, that, that, oh that's not good, that, all of this, and this, and this, and this. We'll start off, I think we'll just check all the fluids, make sure our diffs, um, gearboxes, all that kind of stuff is topped up, ready to go. Make sure the oil is in the engine, good to go. And then the last fluid to do will just be the cooling system. And then after that, we've got some more gear to go on, but we'll let you know that in a sec. All right, now that we've got all the oil sorted, I'm not gonna do the motor stuff just yet because I've got some running oil in there at the moment and then just before we go to the tune, um, we'll dump in some good stuff. So, what we're doing now is this mess of wires. Now, it's a mess of wires because it is the old uh, methanol injection system from the patrol. If you wind back to that episode a couple of weeks ago, I did the water methanol injection system and the interchiller, but it turns out the interchiller was doing all the work, so I jumped on the phone to Orlando from Cool Runnings Engineering who supplies these kits and he said, look, they look work a lot better on turbo cars anyway. And I was like, hang on, I've got a turbo build on the way. So we're putting the water methanol injection on the 80 bus. Um, we've been through this. If you wanna know a heap more about this sort of thing, jump on that episode. I'll link it down below um, and I'll let you know what this does, but essentially just injects either a 50-50 mix of water and methanol or pure water or pure methanol. Um, and it just it's a mist before your intake there and then it atomizes in the cylinder um, making more of an efficient burn cools down the burn and essentially gives you more power and just i don't know it, it's a bit, a bit of a safety thing so obviously you don't want to go melting pistons when you're shoving boost down your engine so this is one of those things that we do need to get in before we hit the dyno so let's hook into it What do you think you're doing? <laughs> so cast your mind back a long, long time ago, I was trying to get this crap off the roof using uh, eucalyptus oil and a scraper and I tried death by fire, burning it, but it's very flammable and all sorts of stuff. And then the missus comes along, comes up with a great idea and she's killing it. This is the most easy bit. Good to see it being COVID safe. It's really <laughs> bad. Really, yeah, it's pretty good. But you're doing a great job. Arms are getting really sore. Show me a trick you did before. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> I 
Okay, now I don't even know where I was. Something to do with water methanol injection, which is going well. The kit is in. So we've got the ECU, everything's wired in, right up to the point where I'm on the uh, back end side, which is uh, tank, pump, signal, power, all that's got to go in. But the water methanol is on the front. I'm just waiting on a delivery for a new valve, which will be here. Once I get my intercooler pipe, which will be coming the Savo slash tomorrow morning. And once that pipe's here, we'll cut that down, put the new jet in, bang, job done. Oh, oh, what have you done? <laughs> Oh my God, it's just taking it out. Reverse the drill slide, or untwist it by hand. Ooh. Oh no, don't do that. You did reverse. I know, but then I instantly went back on my word. Oh man, I don't even know. See these, they go on there, just work out where it ended up. Oh, that was from the back light. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How far did it pull? Anyway, this is the stuff that's got to go on the roof. It's a sticky back, anti-heat, anti-acoustic, Thingy my Bobby from Car Builders. It's essentially the same as this sort of stuff, but sticky back, so it goes on the roof. So I'm gonna cut out some sheets, just put it in between these little raily bits here, and that'll stop the heat and the noise, especially in a wagon, it's very noisy. And uh, then we can finally put the roof lining on, which we've got something little special going on there too. If this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll put a microphone on the missus. Yes! Ah! I... Right, it's all in. I've been dreading this job for ages. Oh, I said that bit. Last bit, you get to do the honors. Oh no! So this stuff apparently, it's obviously, it's similar to what's on the on the floor, but it's obviously sticky back. So it stops heat being on the roof, get a lot of sun up there, and also noise as well. So heat and acoustic lining. Should keep the car a bit quieter, a bit nicer, a bit cooler, makes your aircon work. So I'm glad that job's done. Should be getting back the roof liner tomorrow. And then we've got that little special little thingamabobie going in that, which I'll show you about later. But look on my bloody suede dash. Oh man, how am I gonna clean that? This stuff's everywhere. Okay, so I'm still waiting on the intercooler piping to come back from powder coating, which means it can't finish off that little jet there. So I'm gonna start working on the back end, but in order to put the tank in and the pump and everything, I need to get some of this flooring sorted. So that's what I'm gonna be working on now. So I'm gonna build some sort of little draw system so I can have a bit of a backboard here and start actually mounting that junk of wires and we can put the pump and all that kind of stuff in. So the plan is to pretty much build a bit of a frame out of steel. Um, now. <laughs> It's because it's the only material I can use. I don't want the whole thing out of timber, that's crap. Um, I can't weld aluminium. So it's gotta be a bit of everything. So we're gonna have a steel frame, we're gonna have timber on top for the bed, and then the actual drawers and that are gonna be made out, out of aluminium to keep the weight down. Well, that's the plan so far, unless some of you legends have a better idea. So we're gonna get hooked into this frame so I can just box something up so I can build an area in here to actually start mounting things. <laughs> I've been grinding, cutting, welding for hours and hours now. Um, this is the plan, pretty much made this base plate which picks up the mounts where the old seats used to be for the rear rows. So that's sort of the floor plan. Um, and then this, hold on, this section here, which is freshly welded and hot, ah, is gonna be the top section, which is like, now gotta be raised up. And that's where the top, like, MDF will go or whatever I use. That'll be like the top layer, which will be the bed. And then I've decided at the front to use a bit of a piano hinge because this section actually can't come out of the car when it's attached to the rest of it. So I'm thinking of making it a detachable piano hinge setup attached to this, and then it will kind of lift up like that. 
for two reasons. One, obviously to access what's in here, and two, I might put some gas struts on it and then it can be like a bit of a couch once the mattress is in here. This will be a bit of a back bed and you put, prop the pillows up, look out the back when you're at the beach and stuff. Pretty cool. Except I have run out of gas, so gotta go down to the shop, get some more gas, so I can keep welding, cutting, grinding, all that good stuff. Alright, progress has been made, and I say progress because it's taken a bloody long time. To all you people that say, oh Sam, why don't you post videos more often, oh it takes so long to post an episode. The last 30 seconds of footage, I reckon, took me about two days of work. So that's why some of these things take time. Anyway, we've got the thing sorted, I've done a lick of paint on there, just blacked it out for now. Um, and we've knocked up just a bit of this board here. So as I was saying, I want to get this in so I can start mounting some fuse panels and bits and pieces we need to get thing running. So just some uh, marine ply MDF and marine carpet. I'm just going to techy screw it onto the front here and then I can start mounting all these different panels and bits and pieces. The water methanol injection pump and the tank as well, which is where we were a few days ago. So let's get this on, start working on that pump. Alrighty, so the water methanol injection is pretty much in. I did end up having to make um, an extra bucket here that I welded on to mount the tank, but that should be all sweet. Um, once the lid goes on, it should all fit underneath. Um, on here, we've got the pump. Um, nice little spot there, actually, it worked pretty good. Right near the earth bar there, got some power coming through and then run the hoses through to the engine bay. Started putting fuse boxes in that here, but um, we'll get into the electrical in another episode, but pretty much now we can start doing the rest of the system. And I do have some parts that have arrived. Bada bing, bada boom. We do have intercooler piping. So now we can put that little jet in just before the manifold. There's a bit going on on this piece. Um, we've got the air temp sensor, blow off valve, and then the jet injection. So I've actually got this coat. I was gonna do it in bloody bright red, believe it or not. That's why I said had something special I was gonna do. One, they didn't have it. And then two, I walked in the door and they had not just black, but it, oh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got, a bit of a uh, bit of speckle on it, so it's kind of pearlescent. So now I can get the intercooler piping in, plumb all that up, get the blow-off valve in, all those sensors, and then another delivery that came was the shroud for the radiator. So I can really make some ground now. Oh no! I just made a fucking mess. Yeah, not good. I was doing up one of these, one of these fittings for the uh, jet thing in my bobby. Just a little bit too many wee bicks, and she snapped off inside there. Bloody hell! Focus on it. So that's actually a thread snapped off inside the housing. But I actually literally picked up these easy out some super cheap like, or oh, maybe three days ago, thinking, oh, I might need them one day. <laughs> Today's the day, so let's see if they work. Apparently you just kind of do them anti-clock. Where can I put this? Oh, yeah. Could give that one a crawl. Oh, it's grabbed. It's just going in more. Come on, baby. I think I need to go the next size up. A few moments later. Okay, so the easy out things didn't work. The thread is that fine. It just kind of crushed it up and pushed it more against the wall of the the hole and the threads. Then I'm having to just pull the thing out. I'm gonna run a tap through it again. I can see all the crap coming out already. Bit of a pain in the ass undoing everything we just did, but gotta get this sorted. Oh, there we go. That feels good. And done. Now we're back where we started. Lesson learned, don't over tighten little bolts. Alrighty, radiator and shroud time. So I ended up just going back to Jake and getting this shroud made up. They had to do a bit of laser cutting cleaning up, but it's looking good. Um, what I'm gonna do, I've got some of this like weather seal. It's like a sticky back weather strip. So I'm actually, this, I didn't do this with the patrol, but along the sides here, I'm gonna run a couple of strips just to help seal the air and really make sure those fans suck through the radiator instead of grabbing air from the side. We've got two small six, uh, they're 12 inch thermos. 16s we fit on the patrol, but 12s are on this one, but they're the big dogs. So they're real deep. Their CFM is huge. 
1870 CFM, which is massive. I think the other ones I had were about 1300, so they should suck really good. And the other good thing with the Haltech, I was able to independently control them with a stage one, stage two fan. So the first fan will kick in, and then if it gets really hot, the second fan will kick in. It just helps kind of get that temperature where it needs to be. So we'll get this thing sealed up, put some bolts in there, ready to go, get these fans bolted up in the car, flew it in, and then I think we're ready to go for a drive. Okay, now being a brand new cooling system, I can decide what coolant to put in now. I'm putting in the Nulon red coolant because that is specifically designed for aluminium systems. Now, big sim aluminium systems, sacrificial anode, and you get a lot of corrosion build up. and can actually eat through your radiator. So you gotta make sure you use the right stuff to suit the application, so we'll get this stuff in there. Now this bottle in particular is actually a concentrate mix, which means I'll have to go 50-50 with some distilled water as well. And now that she's all topped up and ready to go, ladies and gentlemen, I reckon it is time to fire this thing up, run a heat cycle, get it up to temperature. I'm gonna just double check the level of coolant, double check the power steering fluid as I go, and then hook in and go for a drive, bed these rings in. All righty, let's see what happens. I don't know if it's gonna idle because the uh, throttle. Hmm. I need to set the idle speed. Oil pressure, oil temperature, air temp, coolant. All right. Oh. It might idle. See if it self lands. Come on, stay open. Ugh. A few moments later. All right, so I just turned the idle control on on the ECU and she's idling, I'm not on the throttle. Takes a little bit to come down, but we're on. So now I'm just gonna uh, check all those fluids, get the temperature up, see if the fans kick in, and then we go for a drive. Brakes are a bit spongy, but they're there. Whoa, we are stuck in low. <laughs> We're stuck in low range. Oh no. Okay, let's sort that. Alrighty, take two. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is just load up the engine, bed those rings in. Don't want to rev it a lot, just keep it in a low gear. Maybe apply some braking. not bad. See if those fans kick in. Oh, it's blown a fuse. I've just seen it's blown one of the fuses for the fans, so 
might upgrade them. All right, so like I said, we do have some burn off, which is expected. Off of this heat shield, that's fine. Now just check for leaks in that, make sure the coolant level's good, change those fuses in the fans, because this is starting to warm up, and hopefully they'll kick in. I'm excited by that. Is it the blow off? Oh, I haven't even set that up yet. I didn't know it was going to actually blow off. That's sick. It's out of the shed. <laughs> Jeez, holy smokes. I'm that excited. Almost forgot to do a bloody outro. Oh, anyway, we're going to run through, just make sure nothing's leaking and it looks like it isn't, which is great. No coolant, no oil. The only bit of steam that came off was from that um, fiberglass wrap in the exhaust, which is expected. Oh, anyway. Next episode will be the Dino Tune, hopefully. Uh, but like I said at the start of this episode, we've got that competition running. So if you want to be the first to go for a drive in this thing, and I tell you what, it'll be absolutely worth it after that little run just there without a tune or anything. Jump on the website, every dollar is an entry. Um, just grab something, you get a hoodie anyway. If you're in the market for a new shirt, grab one. We've got our work shirts and a bit of a bonus you go on the draw as well. So every dollar spend is an extra entry and I'll be drawing that in the next Built Not Bought episode when we do the Dino on this thing. Anyway guys, I'm gonna get onto it, have another drive, and I'll see you next time. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to click up here to subscribe to the channel. Click over here for our latest merchandise on our website. And down below or to the side, I'm not sure where it is, is our last episode. If you haven't watched it, click on that to check it out. See you guys.